What's going on everybody and welcome back to the Lunar Witch. Today we are going to be talking about the goddess of protection, Bastet. Now Bastet is a long anticipated goddess. I've had a lot of people ask me to do Bastet so I wanted to make sure that I got this deity video out there because a lot of people have been asking about Bastet and I understand that a lot of people are going to hear the deity of protection. Now yes, she is the goddess of protection but she is also the goddess of a lot more and we are going to go over that in today's video. Today's video is also going to go over some herb offerings and some liquid offerings and other offerings that you may be able to place on her altar as well if you are starting to work with Bastet in your deity work. So with that being said, let's not even take another minute. Let's go right into the mythology of Bastet. Bastet was the cat-headed Egyptian goddess, originally a ferocious lioness. Her image softened over time, although she retained her fierce protectiveness. An important member of the Egyptian pantheon, Bastet was a feline-headed goddess who served as a protector of pregnant women and manifestation of the Eye of Ra. Originally a fierce deity, as we've said before, Bastet became more benevolent over time. Her aggressive tendencies were passed on to the goddess Sekhmet. Bastet's name translated as She of the Ointment Jar. For this reason, she was often depicted bearing a jar adorned with cats. It is important to recognize that the names of Egyptian gods were frequently connected with words due to their similar phonetic structures. The ointment jar Bastet ostensibly named for did not play any role in her mythology or worship, suggesting its connection to her was purely a phonetic one. Bastet was easily identifiable in hieroglyphics as the cat-headed woman. She carried her namesake jar in a sistrum, both decorated with feline motifs. Some early depictions of Bastet seem to suggest that she was originally a lioness or lion-headed woman. Over time, however, her representation shifted that of a domestic cat. Though the transition from lion to domestic cat may seem radical, it actually reflected a shift in Egyptian society. Cats had recently become domesticated and Egyptians prized them for their ferocity and rapacious nature while simultaneously appreciating their nurturing parental tendencies. Bastet was often regarded as a kinder, gentler version of the goddess Sekhmet. Both goddesses were associated with the Eye of Ra and its destructive powers, but where Sekhmet was wrathful, Bastet was protective. While the more vengeful aspects of the Eye of Ra were typically associated with Sekhmet, Bastet would be fiercely protective and even ferocious at times. She was believed to be the goddess of pleasure, a ward against contagious diseases and evil spirits, and a protector of pregnant women. As a manifestation of the Eye of Ra, Bastet was portrayed both as Ra's daughter and his consort. With Ra, Bastet had a son, Mahis, who, as a lion god, bore strong resemblances to his mother. Some myths positioned Bastet as the mother of Anubis. The jackal god's associations with Isis came fairly late in the development of the Egyptian cosmology, and his connection to the ancient Bastet likely predated them. Bastet was a significant deity from an early period in Egyptian history at the Valley Temple of Kephri at Giza. She and Hathor were the only gods whose names were recorded. Initially worshipped as a fierce lioness goddess, Bastet eventually became better known for her gentler aspects. As her softened iteration grew in popularity, she became more and more associated with domestic cats. Following this shift, Bastet was often portrayed as a cat-headed goddess. Now, as you can see, Bastet has a lot of mythology. She has a lot of background, and a lot of people are drawn to Bastet for these protective reasonings. A lot of the people that I've talked to that have worked with Bastet have always said that they really do enjoy the fact that she has this strong protective energy to her, and they love the fact that it is a strong feminine energy coming from her as well. Now, as we said in the mythology, Bastet is also a protector of illnesses. Now, I've talked to somebody before who actually has utilized Bastet in their deity work to overcome an illness. This was during the time that, uh, you know, the whole COVID virus was going around and stuff like that. So in 2020, they actually utilized Bastet to help them and kind of protect them from the virus. From my understanding, they never contracted the virus after working with Bastet. So this goddess is very good at utilizing with protections and things like that. And that is one of the biggest things that I'm always stressing in your witchcraft too, especially if you are just starting out and you are starting to go into deity work, your biggest thing is going to want to be protections. And Bastet, being the goddess of protection, is super helpful with that. So let's start to get into other things with Bastet, like what you can leave on her altar as offerings. So things you can leave on her altar, I usually say this a little later on in the video, I'm just going to say it now. A statue of that deity can be placed on that altar. You can also have a picture of that deity on there. That shows a huge sign of respect that you are willing to at least get a picture or a statue of said deity that you are working with and place it on the altar to let that deity know that this is your place. This is your altar. On top of that, cat statues are going to be a big one that you are going to want to put on this altar considering cats are really associated with Bastet. 
uh, very closely. So cat statues are definitely going to be something that you really want to place on her altar as an aesthetic. Uh, this is going to generally like kind of help out in the sense of that connection between you and that deity because it shows that you respected that deity enough to realize what was connected with that deity and you took the time to buy that and place it on their altar. So cat statues are definitely going to be your number one definite thing that you want to place on that altar for Bastet. For liquid offerings, anything sweet like sweet wines, even soda, this is actually really good to put on her altar. But with any Egyptian deity as well, water is going to be a really good liquid offering to put on there as well. Considering wine and a lot of those like sugary substances, if you're leaving those out in the open and they're not bottled up and you have them in a glass, you know, it starts to trigger fruit, you know, fruit flies and a lot of bugs and stuff like that. And those are things that you don't want around your altars, uh, mainly because you want to keep your section with your altar as clean and away from anything along those lines. So you can use sweet liquids, you can use soda, you can use wines and things like that. That is perfect, but if you are going to do things like that, only keep it on there for a few days, maybe a week at a time, because you don't want to sit here and have any bugs come to that altar because it's going to make your uh, altar a little uncleanly, which could in turn make the deity a little upset. So just make sure that you are switching those offerings out if you are placing sweet wines or sweet liquids on there, just so you're not attracting bugs. Water is definitely going to be the best offering because you can just leave a bottle of water on there or leave a glass of water on there until it evaporates or until the offering has been completely drained. As for herbal offerings, mint and catnip are actually going to be your two best ones to place on there. Mint is a highly protective herb as well, so that kind of goes hand in hand with Bastet. I've also seen people use peppermint as well. For those of you that are saying, if I don't have mint leaves, can I use peppermint? Uh, yes, you can use peppermint as well because that is also a very strong protective herb as well that also associates with Bastet. You can utilize peppermint, you can utilize mint, but catnip too, obviously with her being Bastet, the cat goddess, things like that, that is going to be something really good to place on her altar as an herbal offering as well. As for food offerings, now I've heard a lot of different things with this. The main thing that I've seen like kind of connect and go in the same direction was any food offering that has like meat in it is perfect to place on her altar. So if you have like I don't know, pigs in a blanket or anything along those lines and you want to just put those on her altar for a couple days or maybe even a day just as like a meal and just say, here you go, have it for an hour and then, you know, take it away from the altar after you feel as though that the, the offering's been there for a while. Food offerings with meat in it are definitely going to be a very good thing to put on Bastet's altar. If you are just starting to work out with her or if you've been working with her for quite some time, this is definitely going to be a very good offering that you can do because especially with things like this, food offerings, you can actually make a meal for the deity you're working with, place it on the altar and leave it there for a couple hours and then come back, take it away, and then that'll suffice as an offering. So yes, any food offering with meat in it is going to be very, very good to place on Bastet's altar. Now here's a good one too. Instruments, songs, poetry, any type of song work or dance music, anything along those lines, CDs, anything like that, Bastet loves this. Take the time, if you have a small little instrument or any music sheets, any type of music, a type of CD, anything along those lines, if you just have things like that laying around, take that and place that on the altar. These are little aesthetics that Bastet really does appreciate and Bastet will enjoy. This is going to help with connecting you to that deity a little bit more, showing that you are going out of your way to get these offerings that they enjoy for that deity. For anything kind of like sugary or candy, chocolates and fruits are going to be really good also to place on her altar. These are little desserts, little sweets that you can kind of place on there because like most deities, every deity has a sweet tooth. And if that's the case, you are going to want to definitely put some chocolate on her altar. And if you can do that, this is going to show, and you will definitely see, especially if you have candles on the altar as well, which we're going to get into in the candle colors and stuff like that that you can leave on her altar. But if you have candles on there, you'll notice the candle flames and if they're very strong and steady trust me when you place that piece of chocolate on there or anything sweet for that matter you are going to notice a huge change in those candle flames now I mentioned this in the last one we're gonna go over this red gold and silver candles are going to be the best thing to place on her altar when it comes to candles these are going to be colors that you can place on there red gold and silver you can place them in any order that you want you can get just red candles you can get just cold candles you can get all three you can get two it doesn't matter so long as you get one of those those three colors and place it on her altar, those three colors are definitely going to be very, very good to place on her altar. For crystal offerings, you have tiger's eye, cat's eye, moonstone, 
and turquoise. These are four really good crystals that you can take. Very easy crystals to find too in any sort of metaphysical store. Now, if you don't have metaphysical stores near you, you can easily go onto eBay, you can go onto Amazon, you can look for these types of crystals. I just want to tell you that if you are going to go through eBay, if you are going to go through Amazon, if you don't have metaphysical stores near you, make sure that it is a trusted seller and that the crystals are real. There is a lot of people out there that have started making fake crystals, making them look super real, and then you get it in the mail and you realize, why is this so light? and it's, it's not a crystal. So keep that in mind when you are shopping around if you don't have metaphysical stores. You wanna make sure that you do have a real crystal that you are placing on her altar because this is going to be a huge sign of respect, especially since these crystals are associated with Bastet. Now, I know we went over a lot in today's video. Bastet is definitely a deity that you are gonna to wanna to pay attention to just a little bit more. Now, I don't really work with Bastet closely. Bastet is around from time to time because of the fact that I work so closely with Anubis, Bastet tends to come around from time to time. So a lot of my information came from a lot of research and a lot of digging around and asking people who actually do work with Bastet. So if you guys do work with Bastet or anybody here sees this video that works with Bastet, if there's anything you have to add to this video that may be helpful for anybody else trying to work with Bastet, please leave that in the comment section below because it is super helpful to the community and I absolutely love when people do that kind of stuff because it shows that there's other support coming from other people other than just myself. With that being said, I know we went over a lot in today's video. We went over the mythology and a lot of the offerings that you can leave on our altar. One of the biggest things I want to tell you guys is first off, I'm not going to go over a really big recap anymore, mainly because I started doing chapters. So you guys can easily go back in the video and see where I was talking about certain things in case you wanted to go back and actually look and go over in case you missed something and you just need to repeat, go back, kind of refresh your memory. These, are, these chapters are going to definitely be a little more helpful than me just doing a recap at the end of my videos. But like I said, I really hope everybody enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure you leave a like on today's video and also leave a comment down below to let me know how you enjoyed. If you have any other things that you have that you would like to talk about, leave that down below in the comment section as well. And if you're new to this channel and you were just seeing this video for the first time, feel free to subscribe to the channel. It is greatly appreciated and it greatly helps me out with getting my content out there to those who are also trying to learn about witchcraft and spirituality. And until next time, I will see you here on The Lunar Witch.